Uh, they're used to seeing good basketball in these parks. We are in Argentina, and uh, Argentina will be playing tomorrow against the Bahamas. But right now, it's all about two teams, Chile and Uruguay, that are trying to go to 2-0, oh, both teams winning. Uh, on opening day, Chile uh, winning against the Virgin Islands, a real close one, and Uruguay pulling away late over the last five minutes. Uh, House Point, Columbia 25 over the last five minutes to get their win. See Columbia winning earlier tonight over the Virgin Islands, so they have uh, at least temporarily gone top of the standings, but the team that wins this game will move up into first place. So this is, again, the FIBA. Olympic pre-qualifying tournament. The winner will of this tournament will uh, go into the Olympic qualifying tournaments next year as they try to to make it uh, to Paris. And uh, great to see the kids in the stands watching the games. And uh, great to see uh, some of these uh, older fans as well turning out tonight. Some mate, popular beverage in uh, South America. Made using leaves and twigs from the yerba mate plant. Kind of like shrub in any event. Uh, he's going to watch some good basketball here tonight. I'm excited to watch Uruguay. When they put it all together, boy, they can play some basketball and they are dangerous. You better believe it. Everybody knows it in these parts how well this Uruguay team can play. And they are going to try to see off the Chile team that has to be feeling confident after their performance on the opening night. They're going to coach by Gerardo Chauri. Uh, Uh, Nicholas Mazzarino and Gonzalo Brea Rey assisted uh, for Chile. They come out again after the 62 61 win over Cote d'Ivoire, excuse me, over uh, Virgin Islands on game day one. That was a big performance from Nicola Carbaccio, who came out and had 23 points, eight rebounds. There he is. Uh, just coming out right there. Something to build on. And everybody knows this Chile team, they come out, they do compete. So this uh, should be a good game. They'll be looking to get a good start tonight. But as we saw in the first game in Lavanda tonight, it's not how you start and how you finish. Virgin Islands have jumped out to a 14 point lead on Columbia, but uh, faded fell away over the final three quarters. So anyway, we're going to pause for the playing of the national anthems.
So the so the coaches shake hands and the players meet at mid court. And we'll get a look at the starting fives, but before that, we'll look at the referees. Jesse Diaz from Puerto Rico, Nathaniel Saunders from Canada, and Samuel Hidalgo from the Dominican Republic. Getting the honors for this game. And seeing Nicola Pomoli, Matias Calfani, Emiliano Ceres, Joaquin Rodriguez and Kiro Washman in the starting five for Uruguay. Iglesias, Capalbo, Apanello, uh, amongst Apanello, rather, amongst all the substitutes for Coach Jauri, Gerardo Jauri, veteran tactician. Chile is going to be Sebastian Herrera. Talk more about him. Diego Lowe, Felipe Haas, Ignacio Varela, and Nicola Carvacho, Jones, Carrasco, and Saldo, Delgada, Isla, Pickett, and Soto coming off the bench for Coach Cordova. And there is Juan Cordova. Sebastian Herrera, that outstanding season that he had uh, with Telecom Vasquez Bond this past season in Germany where they won the Basketball Champions League, just a sensational campaign, and then lost in the finals of the German playoffs, but he was a big part of that success. Coach Calvary actually was presented as a new coach of Uruguay uh, at the start of June. And uh, he was, I guess, the official Replacement for Coach uh, Ruben Magnano, who, uh, when they didn't qualify for the FIBA Basketball World Cup, that was when his time ended as the coach of Uruguay. in Uruguay coming out to face this good Chile team. So again, they, uh, overall, Carvacho is the top performer, 24 efficiency. Barrera had nine points. Barrera had 12 points. And, uh, I say had eight point or eight assists in that first game as well as five rebounds.
Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to Argentina here in La Bamba. This is the FIBA Olympic pre-qualifying tournament and the battle between Uruguay and Chile. And coming right out, early foul committed by Sebastian Herrera. Can not you avoid those cheap fouls a long way out on the perimeter early on, but that's exactly, in fact, they called it on Diego Lowe. Fouling Pamoli. And kind of finally missing with the three-pointer here at the start. So Sebastian Arreda steps out of bounds. Don't like to give those cheap turnovers. See what Coach, Coach Cordova is saying. Hey, my guy got pushed out of bounds. He didn't just step out of bounds on his own. Uruguay pushing it hard and missing with that attempt. Massa with the rebound, Number 22. There's a drive and foul. Carvacho is going to the line. So the first one is good for Carvacho. Puts his team in front. Here's Washman at the strike. And again, another miss. Nicola Carvacho with the rebound. Can have another big night tonight. Here's Herrera. I say from three point range. Good. That's a good looking shot. And Carvacho is going to be warned about interfering with the basketball. A lot of energy being displayed early on by this Chile team. You don't bring the energy in a game like this. You're going to go home. And there is an offensive foul called. So the ball goes back over to Chile. Another whistle and a foul has been called. So a lot of whistles being blown here. First couple of minutes, a few fouls already. And tic-tac fouls. Here's Herrera. I say for three. Cavacho able to knock it back out of the perimeter. To Diego Lowe. Varela. Looks down low. Three-pointer for Arena, and that's what he does, folks. Catch and shoot, boy, he is tough. Full meter behind the arc, Sebastian Arena. Knocks down the open jumpers, a seven-nothing lead for Chile. And shooting it and missing it. Long way out, Rodriguez. There's Gowdy over there, barking away his instructions. Carvacho. And the left-handed Carbacho missing that one. Nice answer that time from Pomoli. It's a deep little uh, layup or runner. And finally, Uruguay nearly three minutes in, get their first bucket. Meanwhile, no 
no hesitation from Ignacio Barela, stroking it from deep. And it's a 10-2 lead for Chile. And Chile really putting a putting a good face on tonight. They are ready to go against Uruguay. Rodriguez, they share it. Promising start for the Chileans. And the reach and the foul called on Joaquin Rodriguez. Led Uruguay the other night with 19 points, seven uh, rebounds, had a couple of assists. Coach Jaudi had a couple of spells as national team coach just over a decade ago. Here is a, a miss from Carbaccio. Looked like maybe he was a little bit of contact down there, a little push, but he's not complaining. Should have made that one. Pomoli drives, misses. Washman rebounds the miss. And the drive and the foul. So free throws coming here for Uruguay's number 10, Emiliano Ceres. Diego Lomi while picks up his second. So he goes out of the game. Oh, struggling early on. Seems like everything is a struggle. 16 points for Emiliano Ceres in his team's win over Colombia. And the national team since the Americas qualifiers back in 2019, the Americas qualifiers for the season basketball World Cup. Only played one game, in fact. Uh, but who knows? Under the new regime, might get more opportunities to play. Herrera. Uh, that was not so much a catch and shoot, but nevertheless, he let it fly. He's much more effective. Once he's got his feet set, here is the offensive rebound and put back by Calfani. That's Calfani. Oh, sweet move, sweet little touch from Carbaccio. Coach Cordova, the other end. Shot clock about to expire. Uruguay has to let it fly and said it misses. Pretty much everything lands right into the hands of Chile. They have definitely been the better of the two teams so far. Barela passes to the corner. Three point shot short. Calfani again. Rodriguez, nice sharing of the basketball from Rodriguez. So Carbacho is going to get his first uh, break. Isla comes into the game. <laughs> Carbox is a real character, isn't he? And meanwhile, the 24-year-old Rodriguez, so much expected of him, the Obras Sanitarius guard. Obras in uh, Argentina. Finally makes the first free throw. Hey, hey, hey. 
Buffs only one of two. Oh, good defense coming up with the steal from behind and then quickly into transition. Pomoli tries to get to the line. Good work by Calfani crashing on the offensive boards and Uruguay trying to pick it up a little bit. The pace trying to take the fight to Chile. Three point look right there, but the offensive rebound. That was Iglesias who missed it from deep. And it's Iglesias who makes that shot with the left hand. So He gets into the paint. I know he wasn't. He just turned it over. Excuse me. Uruguay have it going the other way. Trying to have that deficit, maybe even get a three here. I'll pull all the beautiful bounce pass. They pass it back outside. Look at Uruguay working the basketball over the shoulder pass to the perimeter. And Rodriguez missing, or no, excuse me, Pomoli missing from the left corner. <laughs> Martin Rojas called for a foul there. You can see he uh, was not. Impressed by the call, giving the mean stare to the referee, but he fouled Daryl Jones. In fact, they may they may have taken that away. Now they definitely called it on him. So Martin Rojas, and it puts Jones on the free throw line. Jones, Daniel Jones, the guard, Leones de Quilpe, goes to the line and makes the first. Good size, uh, Jones, 1.95 meters in height, that's six feet five inches. Makes both. Down low. The question is, they're going to Pomoli feisty. They're not going to. They got to whistle for the foul. So Pomoli gets two free throws. of age, Camoli, so this kid has a bright future. I say kid, young man. Again, one of these guys is itching to get his chance with the national team, make the most of it. And he really does look the part here. So he makes the free throws and goes out. So now checking in uh, is his replacement, Juan Zanotta from Pinheiral. Number 24 with the beard. Provacho back in the game. Spinning, going up with the left hand. Maybe could have had a little bit better control that time of going up with the shot. 
Five point lead. Three point attempt from Rojas. Well short. So Chile just under two minutes remaining, still with the lead. Uh, but definitely with Uruguay, you feel like they're knocking on the door. Chile had to keep that scoreboard ticking over. Here's Jones. He's a threat. He pass out to the perimeter. And, oh boy, that was long. That attempt. That was Pickett. I tore Pickett. Oh. So Sebastian Carrasco reaches in and commits the foul. So Bernardo Barrera, having been fouled, goes to the line and makes the first. Five years of age, Barrera, Chauvin makes the two free throws, cuts the deficit to just three points. Full court pressure here from Uruguay, and the foul called on Zanota. So now again, it's free throws for Chile, who uh, I think Sebastian Carrasco more than happy to get that foul called on his opponent so he can get to the line. Well, from the free throw line, they didn't do too well uh, against Virgin Islands the other night, just 10 of 18. Uh, but they looked okay tonight. Carrasco makes the two. Oh, nice pass into the paint. And a turnover from Barrera, and again, Chile with another chance here, Jones. Here's Jones probing. Nice pass out to the wing, stepping in and knocking down the jump shot, Alejandro Barriada. He's got four points. And a three-point stroke is good for Ceres. Well, they can pretty much hold it for one if they want to, Chile, and I think that's what the plan is, take it down as far as they can. So maybe a few seconds on the shot clock, and then they'll make their move. Here's Jones. No, he's going to take it a little bit sooner. Misses everything, and he's left your guys enough time here. And that is, well, that was a risky play there, reaching in to knock it, the ball away from Barretta and have it go off of him. You don't want to pick up a foul there because you're over the limit. But it was a risk, but it paid off. 0.7 seconds on the clock. They need to catch it and shoot it. They do, and Karasko hits the backboard. But Cordova, I'm guessing, it looks like he's up for the fight. He's happy with where they are, and he wants to get his players back over to the bench to talk things over. His Chile team leads it 18 to 14 at the end of one.
Well, the early numbers, you see two more threes have been made by Chile, and they've been able to get to the free throw line. In fact, both teams get to the line wide. And just a slight edge for Uruguay on the boards. So far for Chile, good balanced attack. I mean, they've had seven players score in that first quarter alone. Nobody has more than three points. In fact, three, four players have threes, three points. And three have two points. So sharing the basketball, getting it done. Whereas Uruguay, have uh, they're being led by Emiliano Ceres, who just hit that last three-pointer. They also sharing the basketball, but not to as good effect so far. That's Calfani with his uh, lone basket. Good work there from Uruguay sharing the basketball. So, well, you know where to watch basketball, folks. Courtside 1891. You can scan in the barcode. You can get that into your smartphone. The video stream, schedule scores, and more. And wherever you are, you can uh, get it right at your fingertips. Or you could plug it into your TV if you have the right USB cable, or you can airplay it, you name it. The technology these days and the ability to watch sports with your smartphones outstanding. You could be anywhere. It's not like the old days. And again, that's just, for me, the best picture that we'll see here is kids, young, young guys showing up, watching basketball, throwing some inspiration from what they're seeing. And of course, in Argentina, they have got a lot of role models. We'll be watching uh, Facu Campazzo in Argentina. Jones, Carrasco, Vergara, Carbacho, and Pickett on the line, or in the game, rather. For Chile, here's Carbacho, spins, turns. And the ball goes out of bounds, off of Uruguay. I think Carbacho's got to be a little bit better with his uh, the way he's going up for his shots. He needs to go to the basket, try to draw some contact, get to the free throw line. And then down the basketball. We're going to try and pick it up defensively. Barela pulls up. Here comes Uruguay. Point first quarter, Iglesias, Rodriguez, Zanota, Barrera, and Rojas. And driving and scoring is Juan Zanota. His first two points. And now it's just a two point game. Ball deflected on the pass. And a chance for Uruguay to tie or take the lead. Rodriguez, bounce pass. Three point attempt is good, and Uruguay have taken the lead. Barrera knocks it down. Barrera, beautiful play, but misses everything. But they're picking up the, the loose change. Pickett, outdoor Pickett, picking it up. Puts Chile back in front. And nice hesitation from Martin Rojas. Kind of like a pump fake. Got Carbacho off his feet and drew the foul. So free throw is coming. There's Leo Gutierrez, part of the Brain Trust for Argentina, of course, uh, played for a long time himself for the national team in the 2004 Olympic gold medal winning team for Argentina. 
Didn't play that much, but he did play late a lot more later in his career. And if memory serves me correctly, he was a big time player when they got the bronze medal at the 2008 Olympics. So Rojas puts Uruguay back in front. Carbacho goes out. And I think it's really key that this man is in the game, Ignacio Barela. And this group against Zanotto has been tough defensively, blanketing him. Barela uh, lost control of the basketball. And a break for Barela. He can't turn it over that cheaply. And Cordova, sensing his team is a little bit out of whack, calls timeout. People looking at their mobile phones these days. <laughs> There's a game going on. Hopefully, they're checking the stats. Well, who knows? Maybe they're looking at replays on courtside 1891. Here is Jones putting it up, and that was a big play. Is that a two or a three? I think it was a two. No, it was a three. But Chile go back up 23 21. Always good to come out of a timeout and score like that. Now, Rodriguez misses it. But so badly that it falls into the hands of Rojas, who ties it up. Oh boy, that was a sweet turn and make from Hase. Zanota into the paint. Oh, behind the back pass. A little bit of showtime. How about that? And the three pointer as well. The second from Barrera. He's got eight. Zanota with a little bit of panache on his passing. And I say fouled by Rodriguez, who's having a tough. Time trying to find his way into the game tonight. This was Jones. And then look at that. I mean, in the old days, you might expect to see that on the playground. But these days, if it's, you do it well and you're effective, leads to an open jump shot, more power to you. But if he goes out of bounds, you're going to hear from the coach. Boy, I say really got a good stroke. Third time tonight. Eight points, second three. Rojas from deep. And Took him a while to get into the game, but he is now well and truly into it. He's got seven points. Hey, 
Trying to go between the legs, a little step back. It's good. Two jump shots for Jones. So in the last couple of minutes, both teams now engaged in a shootout. Barrera gets it to Rodriguez. Has to bring it back outside. And he loses it. Jones knocks it away. Barrera gets it. And his desperation attempt goes off the, looks like the side of the backboard. Saudi. He's coaching away on the sidelines. Well, he's definitely got their attention now. Here's uh, another three attempt. And this time it was Barela missing. Uh, tough move down low, Nicola Pomoli back in the game. Just good things happen when he's in the when he's in there. And Jolly is saying, listen, it goes the little things about how you turn, how you position yourself with screens, and then when you position yourself to make a to catch a pass. He's been at this a long time. So Pomoli takes his time. Goes to the line, and I like what I see out of double zero. Fifteen is Arreda. Oh, look at that wonderful pass, and he gets it to Ignacio and Saldo right on cue. I say went for the steal, got out of position, and there's Rojas going to the free throw line. Big one, Bavia Pieritz. 25 year old makes for, I mean, he had 10 points, 12 rebounds against Columbia. Ties it up at 33 again. See if they can get Jones more touches. Herrera, bounce pass, a beautiful pass as well, but great recovery from Calfani coming over to swipe it. Block Carrasco. 1.4 seconds on the shot clock. That's just great recognition there by Calfani. and fouled on the putback so a chance for a three-point play Wow it's 
So Areta did well there, and then yeah, Calfani just was trying to box out. He still had his hands on him when he went up and was whistled for the personal. A little bit unlucky for Calfani. But a great rebound from Carbaccio. Back to a three point lead. Carbacho's got six. Rodriguez floats in, gets it to go. You can see he's got that little bit extra bit of athleticism. Carbacho solves. Defender coming, gets it over to Arena, and that is, I mean, I would put money on him making that shot when he's got his feet set. It's just automatic. If he's not got his feet set, and he has to rush up the shot. It's a different story for Sebastian Arena. So that three-pointer pushes the lead up to four points. Let's get out of the bench during the timeout and listen in. Nos largamos a doblar, dejamos al tirador solo del otro lado, no presionamos la bola, no buscamos el riesgo, estamos con dos colectivas y no buscamos el riesgo, busquémosle la bola, tenemos que conseguir, nos están ganando las divididas, los rebotes cortos, vamos, Kirill por, por Martín. Dale, nos falta, nos faltan, hey, los detalles, nos faltan los detalles. Cinco, cinco. Empezamos para el lado del cuatro. Así, Kirill, sacamos. Matías, Matías, volvés. Randolph con Matías y queda. Queda Kirill, Matías y el flex. ¿Está? Cualquiera que sale, no hay nada. Uruguay felt like they had the momentum, but Chile has done a good job holding them off here and going up back by going back up by four points. And Rodriguez again gets to the baseline. Yeah, I thought it was terrible defense to be honest, but foul called. So that's 14 fouls now on. Chile is on Carrasco. And Arreda checks back into the game. And good defense there. And forcing well, the offensive foul. If that's on Calfani, it is indeed. Fouls on Calfani. Arela picks up the dribble. Gets it to Arela. Gets it to Jones. Well, forget what I said earlier about that man right there, Calbacho. I guess that's a shot that he practices and he feels confident. He's not going to make them all, but I feel like you see him try to get to the basket more. Here goes uh, Rodriguez. Washman. Pamoli missing it from deep. Good effort from Calpani, but the ball batted into the hands of Arreta. An opportunity here for Chile to grow their lead late in the first half.
Herrera, well, he didn't catch and shoot that, but he was still able to get his feet set. And Sebastian Herrera, his third three pointer of the game, he's got nine points, he's already equaled his output from the game against the Virgin Islands. And Uruguay a little bit annoyed with something, and now they've called a technical foul. So that'll be another free throw. And the question is, who is it on? Got to maintain their emotional discipline. It's on Calfani, so that's his third foul. Al tirador por abajo, al tirador lo recortamos. Al tirador, cuando hay una hay una sobrecarga y quedó para dos, dejamos al tirador. Vamos. Bueno, cambiemos la pisada. Vamos a ir en el entretiempo, seis puntos, cinco puntos. Vamos. Dale, ahora sí estamos colectivos. Camiseta, camiseta. Martín, Emi, Emi Handoff. Ponemos, tocamos a Kirill. Joaquín abajo. Martín y Emiliano. Allá, allá, allá. Blue, blue con Carbacho. Blue con Carbacho. Con el 4, cambio de hombre. So this is Carbacho catching it low and scoring. And then Jones, followed by Herrera. And I don't know what Calfani said to get the technical, but because of the technical, he's got three fouls now. And Herrera adds to the lead. The biggest of the game, Chile. You know, Cordova really uh, getting on his players, but they give up the layup to Pomoli, who does a good job of finding his way, getting to the rim. Say back in the game, number 22 for Chile. He's a threat from deep. Arela passes to the corner. Jones and Washman hands it off to Pamoli. One minute to go in the first half. Pamoli, boy, he just has got a nose for the basket, doesn't he? Drives in, scores. Goes over to the bench. Timeout has been called. said something before. But 
finally on the bench with three fouls after picking up the technical. Oh, beautiful pass. Jones gets it to. Can you believe it? And I say missing the layup, but such a good job hitting the shots outside. Now they ended up getting the three and being fouled in the corner. What a swing. Salado Isla called for the foul. So quite a big swing here and a bad sequence for Chile. You miss the layup, you go down, you foul the three point shooter. So Cetis makes the first. They were up by 10 points. And that lead is going to be whittled. It's already been whittled down to just four points. If he makes this, it'll get it down to three points. Might just be able to run down the clock far enough to where they do get the last shot, but we'll see. Uruguay might be able to put on some pressure, get a steal. Ignacio Barrera steps over to the right, puts it up, and misses the three. Left a little bit of time here for Uruguay, and just not quite enough time. I'm not sure if that was the right decision or not from Bernardo Barreta. I'm sure his teammates were saying, pass me the ball. But we got to put it up faster. So you can see the uh, scoreboard and the letting the around lights up. So that's not going to count. 45 42, Chile on top of Uruguay at halftime. Well, eight threes for Chile. That has been pivotal for their chance, but four been made for Uruguay. And just wonder maybe if things will eventually have turned the way of Uruguay. They're out rebounding them. And one more assist in Chile, one more steal. And Sebastian Arreda with 10 points, Jones and Ace each with eight. Pamoli and Rojas leading the way for Uruguay. Let's look back at the second quarter highlights. Right behind the back pass out to the perimeter. I say making it from deep. Was Jones. That was one of the better plays in that quarter for Chile. Now Theo and Salda scoring his bucket. So it's 45 42 Chile on top of Uruguay here at the end of the first half. In the FIBA Olympic pre qualifying tournament. We'll be right back before the start of the second half as you watch the, the remainder of these highlights from the second quarter.
You need chemistry. FIFA Basketball World Cup is the peak of the game. It's the toughest competition in the basketball world to win. That is why I will be there. Because when you win for one, you win for all.
Well, 45-42, Chile on top of Uruguay. A lot of basketball left. Chile have uh, been really good. In some ways, it feels like this should be up by more. I mean, it was not, you know, kind of late in the first half. They actually had a 10-point lead, but just a layup. They fouled the three-point shooter at the other end, so that was a five-point swing, and Uruguay made a little bit of a run there at the end, but Coach Cordova's made some nice adjustments during the game. Kept his players locked in. But he's going to have to do it for another 20 minutes. Don't scan the barcode to get courtside 1891 in your smartphone, folks, for video stream schedule scores and more. Rodriguez has not really gotten going offensively, but that can change in a hurry for him in the second half. I got two points, three assists. Second half action underway here in La Banda. And Uruguay can tie it if they hit a three-pointer. Pamoli, Ceres, Otoneo, Barreto, and how about that? They have tied it indeed. Barreto, Lo, Ace, Barela, and Carbacho on the court. There's Carbacho getting it low. He's trapped by Rodriguez. And it's a foul, but Pamoli might just be the best player in the court for Uruguay tonight. He's been terrific. Look at this. Gets it, doesn't hesitate. We've seen him drive into the basket, repeatedly scoring. Doing a great job tonight. Carbacho into the corner. Three-point shot. And Uruguay with a chance to take the lead. Three-point shot, no good. A scrap for the basketball. Great work underneath the basket by Pamoli. And then the ball goes through his hands. I'm surprised they gave the turnover to Pamoli on that. But I guess it did hit him in the hands, so. Rare mistake for him tonight. Herrera into the corner. Barrera for three. Now Rodriguez probing. Set his drives. Look at Rodriguez. Great or Pamoli. Great work for him getting in there. He just does all the little things. Boy, you feel like you're saying what a find he's been. You just wonder where he's been for your wife in recent times because he is a player for whatever reason. Out at a little runner and it's been a tough start to the second half for Chile. Here's why Simpson, they've got a chance here to put some distance between themselves and Chile. Now they turn it over. Foul on Washman. And that's a good call. He just kind of moving screen, stuck his leg in there a little too late. It's kind of like Chile hanging by a thread right now.
Emma Calfani picked up a technical foul late in the first half. Had to go to the bench with three fouls. Uh, driving and great offensive rebound and put back, and that's what you need when you're struggling. Something like that from Carbaccio. Molly fouled out on the wing. And uh, not sure why Pamoli and Carvacho are having exchanging uh, words there. Carvacho with the rebound. Barrera. Barrera over to Herrera, his feet set. And that time did not work, but Pamoli and I think Iglesias battling each other for the rebound. The ball goes out of bounds off of uh, Uruguay. Barrela. Boy, they're cold shooting in this second half. Ball goes out of bounds, 15 on the shot clock. Key moment in the game here with Chile struggling and Uruguay get the sense they've got that chance to where they can maybe build a little bit of a lead, put some even more pressure on, on Chile. Chile just trying to hold firm here. Pamoli, his pass deflected out of bounds. Six seconds on the shot clock. And Carbacho nudges Barreda out of bounds. So he picks up the foul late in the shot clock. Carvacho goes out of the game. And I just wonder maybe if Coach Cordova might be tempted to get Jones back in the game. I wonder if he might be searching for his uh, ideal rotation right now. Here's a driver and another foul. Oh, interesting. Oh, wait. Yeah, they call it on Vergara. In fact, maybe they changed the call, but they have not. 14 fouls on Chile now, so this is going to be a problem for them. The next foul is going to put Uruguay on the line. And I think Cordova knows it. Here's Pamoli driving in. Washman saves it in bounds, and Barreda, look at that, staying with it, and then the foul with Pamoli, active on the offensive glass, and he will go to the line. And I think this is going to be a problem for Chile. They are over the limit with six and a half minutes remaining, and they've made a rod for their own backs now, and they're going to have to deal with it. been the standout man of this game. 14 points, four rebounds, now 15 points. Probably the best player overall in the game, in fact. 5 of 11 from the floor. 
Got a steal. One of these teams that didn't make it to the FIBA Basketball World Cup, but by having the Olympic pre-qualifying tournament, it keeps their hopes alive, albeit faint hopes, of making it to the Olympics. They'd have to win this tournament and then win the Olympic qualifying tournament or win a Olympic qualifying tournament next year. I say puts it up from deep, and how about that? Still can't believe he missed the layup in the first half because when he's outside shooting the basketball, he doesn't miss. Third three-pointer of the game for I say he's got 11, leading his team in scoring now. And missing that time was Iglesias. Varela takes it deep, puts it up and in. Cordova shouting over there on the bench, can't you? Tedes gets it over to Pomoli, who's going to go. Drives in, banks it in. Boy, 17 points for Pomoli. 18, rather. And 5 of 8 from the floor inside the arc. Just a terrific, terrific performance. There's the bounce pass into the lane. They pass it around. It is good for Sedis. Three-point shot, this time short for Massey, and a chance for Uruguay to stretch their lead. Uh, quick answer, they stay, they keep it alive on the boards. Pareda or Washman. Boy, that's got to be frustrating for Chile, getting that deep right at the rim. Ignacio Barela for the second time and just isn't getting it to drop. So he's going to sit down. Watchman, let's just go out. All kinds of substitutions. And James comes back in. As does, Car as does Carrasco. Here's Herrera. Driving in and getting to the free throw line. You're well, like clearly not thinking that there's a foul there, but his appeals are going to fall on deaf ears. Well, give uh, uh, the credit, putting pressure on that defense and attacking the basket and getting to the free throw line.
Alejandro Vergara back in the game, the 19th for Chile. Here comes Barrera. Also, Zanota back in. He's got it. Barrera. Over to Rojas. Rojas hits the three pointer. And just like that, it's a five point lead for Uruguay. They switch on Jones. Rojas trying to stick with him. Could be a mismatch as Jones goes past him but loses it. But then Ase catches it, goes up, and it's fouled. Otanello, Otanello rather with the foul and I say able to get to the free throw line. free throw line overall today so you're gonna have to accept it if you don't make all of them and say missing the second but then Otaneo turning it over so another chance for Chile every possession big as we get deeper into the game here's Jones good work and the ball Scrapped away. And that's enough that the ball just went through his hands. So he soon kind of finally come back into the game. Sonota putting it up from deep. But Chile has settled for that one, I think. They're just glad that Moli's currently out of the game and on the bench because he's just been tormenting them in a myriad of ways. Jones from deep. That's big. He's special. I like his game. Daryl Jones, 11 for him now, his third three pointer of the game. Does he have the key to unlock this Uruguay defense? Now traveling called on Rojas. And neither team just able to open up any type of decisive lead tonight. Coming up on the 11 minute mark in the game, one minute mark in this third quarter. There's Jones, uh, a little bit careless with the basketball that time. And then exploding to the basket, and he is fouled. What a play by Emiliano Ceres. A couple of times tonight, he has been tough driving and making big baskets. And that is frustrating for Chile because you've got the ball to Jones. You want him to go to work. And said is able to take the ball away and go the other way for the basket. But he does not capitalize, nevertheless misses. And the offensive rebound keeps it to the descent for Uruguay. Said is his pass into the paint. 2.9 seconds left on the shot clock. Three-point shot from Zanota. So again, another chance for Chile. They could tie it with a three. I don't 30 seconds. 
of this third quarter. Spreading it out. They're going to take the three. They're going to make the three. And how good is that man, I say? Wow. Three-point range, he is lethal for three. Close, stretch four, maybe even a stretch five. Sonota drives in, little runner. Sonota stays with it. And Chile and Uruguay are tied at the end of three quarters. What a game, folks. What a game here in the FIBA Olympic pre-qualifying tournament in Argentina. 61-61, Chile and Uruguay. Still four more threes for Chile. That's helping him. Three more makes inside the York for Uruguay. And this third quarter, it really felt like with Pamoli in there that Uruguay were just going to take command in the third quarter, and they did go up by five points. But that was it. In fact, I'm just going to double check that. Yeah, so that's right. Yeah, their biggest lead was five points, but Chile able to battle back. I'll say leading the team in scoring. He's got 15 points, 12 for Sebastian Arrera, 11 for Daryl Jones, 10 for Garbacho. So already four players in double figures for Chile, and I'm assuming they're not going to have any more than that. And you got 12 for Rojas, 12 for Ceres, 18 for Pamoli. And it's going to be interesting to see how they fare when he comes back in the game. How much more rest will he get before Jowry is going to put him back in? Well, it's not necessarily not about an individual scoring points, you know, you got to score points when your team needs you to score the points or when you got those open looks. And uh, so from that standpoint, Fernandez for, or rather Joaquin Rodriguez only has two points, just one of three from the floor. But they've been able to keep the scoreboard ticking over. The player that's really been doing the damage has been Pamoli. He's got the ball. So Pamoli, Ceres, Rodriguez, Barrera, and Rojas on the court for Uruguay. So they go for their second win of the Olympic pre-qualifying tournament. Pass outside to Ceres, missing from the wing. Oh. Oh, traveling. Alejandro Vergara called for the travel. Watch him. <laughs> I think he was a little bit surprised by that call. But didn't really have anywhere to go there, did he?
He fouls on Carrasco. And again, everything that Pomoli does, he's he's helping his team. And right now, able to get to the free throw line. While well, he misses the free throw. But he's been pretty good tonight, even at the line. He was five, he's now five to seven from the strike. Not going to make them all, but oh boy, this is both. Had a good time to miss a couple of free throws, that's for sure, for Pomoli. Sometimes you wonder if a player sits down too long. Or is he given everything he's got early on? He's not going to be able to finish later in the game. Garbacho, look at that. Pomoli reaches in and takes it away. And by that, oh, what a swat. Great hustle down the floor. That was Alejandro Vergara getting the block. And now he misses the three. He had the open look. And Rojas missing with a little turnaround in the lane. with the high dribble. Eight on the shot clock, entry pass. Oh, and the bump, I say fouled. Carabacho fouled. No, that was, I say, on the most recent one. from number 19, Alejandro Vergara, but he goes out of the game. It's all, hand, all hands on deck for Chile tonight. They try to get a win over Uruguay. Arreda drives, misses with the layup. That's a missed opportunity. Explosive move, Pamoli. And he's fortunate that they're going to keep it. This is knocked out of bounds. Oh boy, that went off the Pomoli. Yeah, definitely fortunate to keep possession. Rodriguez still can't get it to go. Herrera bumped by Pamoli. Just his second foul, Pamoli, so no problem there. Stolen, Ceres, not the first time tonight he's come up with a steal. Calfani back in the game. See him number seven, he's got the basketball. First time in the second half we've seen him. And Rodriguez fouled out on the perimeter. So 6.57 remaining, still 61-61. No team has scored in this fourth quarter. Rodriguez from deep, missing it. Boy, it's been a tough night for him. And Califani picks up the foul. Does he want to get another technical?
I say back it up on Pomoli. Gets it back outside to Carbaccio. He gets it off. Rivarela gets it off in time. It's going to be Uruguay basketball. Good job from Jones coming up with a steal. Lays it up and in. One of those turnovers, and again, turnovers at midcourt are just disasters. Truly struggling to score. Both teams struggling to score. When you get a turnover like that, you get your first two points of the fourth quarter. Calfani shares the basketball. Rojas misses Calfani with the rebound. Called down low. Free throws awarded on the foul, so a chance for Rodriguez to tie it. Joaquin Rodriguez is two points tonight, his first attempts at the free throw line. And looks very good on that one. So it sinks both and ties it up at 63 apiece. 532 remaining in this important contest. Let's go down to the bench. Rodriguez on the free throw line and he may boast to tie it up. Herrera doesn't settle. Passes it back outside. Oh boy, look who gets it. Well, that was the man they wanted shooting the basketball, I say, but Uruguay with a chance to go back in front. A 
And now they turn it over. A little Huss. He tried to bull his way into the lane. Four and a half minutes remaining. It's incredible how the points have dried up in this fourth quarter. And I say hits the three pointer. Five threes for him, 18 points overall. Pamoli drives and he is fouled. Just doing everything he can for his team tonight. It is an impressive effort. Good for Pamoli. And you look back at his record. Again, he's 24 years of age. And before this tournament, hadn't played for the senior team. It's just uh, I find it incredible. But I guess bringing in new faces. Yeah, he's certainly uh, done enough to merit, merit a selection, further selection. Boy, trying to force it to get away with that one. Trying to get it to Ase, who I think is surprised they're not setting him up outside. Three forty-seven remaining. Carbacho, did they get it off in time? Great defense from Uruguay. So shot clock violation. The ball did not hit the rim. It's amazing how he can shout for Ndoba for the entire game and not lose his voice. Iglesias back in the game. Chile up by two. Joaquin Rodriguez hands it off to Iglesias and Uruguay go back in front. Wow. It's five points, but boy, his last three, huge in the grand scheme of things. Carbacho missing with that kind of push shot, jumper, whatever you want to call it, from the line. And now Chile have to really dig in on defense, not give away anything easy. And yeah, great defense indeed from I say taking it away. And the bump puts Arreta on the free throw line. Now he wants to call timeout. So 2.34 remaining, Uruguay clinging to a 67-66 lead over Chile. Joaquín. 
Nicola, ponés y andate. Viene Martina a jugar el pick. ¿Eh? Va vos y Martina abierto. Nicola, te quedás. Estamos en alto. Nicola se queda. Vos, Gonzalo, abierto. Viene, perdón, Martina Tight game, really. I mean, Chile did open up a 10 point lead early on. A five point lead for Uruguay. Third quarter, but Chile refused, did not allow them to do it, get back to hit, uh, open up a big lead, and they reeled them back in, and now uh, it's tied it with the first of two free throws. Chile. Again, doing a good job at the line tonight. Arrera with 13 points. Majority of those scored in the first half. Uh, makes both. 12 of 14 at the line. Rodriguez doesn't hesitate. Wow, cometh the hour, cometh the man. That's big time in the 70 68 lead. It's not necessarily how many you score, it's when you score them. And that's about as big as it comes. Sebastian Herrera to the corner. Three point shot is good. They get it right back. Wow. Number 19, Alejandro Vergara. Should be back on top by one inside a minute and 50. Driving in in the SWAT. What a play by Carbaccio. Iglesias thought he was going to have some joy getting to the rim. And Carbaccio said, well, he had other ideas. Herrera penetrates, gets in. Oh, what a finish with the left hand high off the glass. What a star. This man that won the Basketball Champions League in Europe with Telecom Baskets Bond back in May. It was April or May. Just terrific season for him. And uh, another timeout now by Uruguay. Now trailing by three. Vamos a hacer un abajo, vamos a hacer un abajo. Salida, handoff. Y el que es defendido por Carbacho empieza acá en lugar de ser esto. Viene a jugar el pick acá. ¿Está? Este abre, este abre. Juego fuerte, caiga fuerte y vengo atrás. Abajo, 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 saque lateral. Esto, esto. Handoff, handoff, de este lado, flash, y acá pongo a pick, pongo el pick. Well, that's one of the plays of the game right there. Carbaccio going up and just saying, not in my house. And then look at this. I mean, are you kidding me? The English that he put on the ball. To get it to go off the glass, just a phenomenal, phenomenal drive from uh, Arrera. He's got 16 points. And Pamoli slips. Oh boy, unfortunate for him. Loses possession, and Gallery now saying, hey guys, imploring his team to play defense. Tough break for Pamoli. Again, he's been the best player tonight for Uruguay. Three-point shot, just grazed the rim. There's the offensive rebound, and Carbaccio fouled by Iglesias. The 
know, Chile could not have asked for a better situation now. I mean, you feel like it's their game to win or lose, but as so often is the case, you've got to take advantage of your trips to the free throw line. And Carbacho tonight, two of three. Now three of four. One of two. Did make it a two possession game with that one free throw, but you never like to miss free throws late. Unless you get the offensive rebound. Rodriguez. Oh, Uruguay. Yeah, they're going to go for three. Sedas puts it up. And I said not able to rebound it. 14 on the shot clock, 30.5 seconds remaining. So timeout has been called. Let's get out of the bench. Sacamos de acá, saca Nicola. Bernardo, Joaquín, Gonzalo, lo vas a buscar. Gonzalo, vas a buscar a Joaquín. Bernardo, Emiliano, rápido lo sacás. Después de este toque, venís a poner esto y esto. Está claro, Gonzalo acá, Emiliano rápido y esto. Está claro, si es zona igual, es una conversión y cortamos. Well, from early, this is where he slipped and came at a critical juncture and really helped Chile. Trailing by four, he's going to try to inbound the basketball. And I feel like they're going to put up a three. They do indeed, Rodriguez. But it's an air ball. And Herrera fouled as he catches it. And just a tremendous, tremendous team effort tonight for Chile. Foul was on Pamoli. And Herrera at the line makes the first. Uruguay falling further behind, but a lot can happen in 27.1 seconds. The Fiat Olympic pre qualifying tournament, game day two. Both these teams won their opening games. And add this to the list of really good games, and the, the pre qualifiers have been being played all over the world. Pamoli fouled. That's just a bad foul. Just an awful foul. You stop the clock. You put Pamoli on the line. Just terrible. So that foul was on Alejandro Bergara, who hit a big three not that long ago. So Pamoli, it just feels kind of like Pamoli is, uh, is running low on fuel in this fourth quarter. I mean, just. You know, you give him his, you give him a break, you let him go out of the game, rest up, and that works. That worked in this game 
until the very end. When he came back in the fourth quarter, just hasn't quite, you know, hasn't been the same player. So it's just looked tired. And here he is reaching around and committing the foul. And I suppose, uh, you know, potential of goal differential as well could come into play here. So you don't want to allow Chile to open up an even bigger lead. But with Pamoli, five fouls. It's a shame for him because he really has been, I've said it before, and I just think it's worth repeating, he has been the best player tonight for Uruguay. Napio Barela takes it up to a seven point lead. Now eight. Zanota. Over to Calfani. Missing it. Chile has it, and that is going to be it. So Chile going to go back to the team hotel tonight in a very good mood. They came out tonight fully focused, laser focused. They rode, you know, they made it through the adverse moments, and they win it 78 to 70 over Uruguay. Great job by Coach Cordova. He had his guys ready. So back to the drawing board for Uruguay. This Chilean basketball team feeling good about the self right now. All these players putting in the hard work. Keeping the benefits. have that four point margin in terms of made three pointers more for Chile. And uh, you digest all of that. But it was Arena and Haas, Haas with uh, 18 points apiece. Jones had 13, 19 for Pomoli just to underline how good he was in this game despite his rough fourth quarter. So here's a look back at the fourth quarter. That was uh, another steal, another turnover by Pamoli. So he had a couple of costly turnovers. That one leading to the Jones break. So shooting that three pointer. He makes more than he misses, that's for sure. So for Uruguay, they're going to try to put this one behind them and I get ready to, to play the Virgin Islands and Chile. Not sure how many people expected them to be 2 0 going into their last game against Colombia, but that will be a battle. And I see no reason why that one shouldn't be tight going down the wire, those two teams. Chile, remember, don't want to get into a three way tie with Colombia and Uruguay. Uruguay beat Colombia in their first meeting. So 
the other drive will next take on the Virgin Islands, as I said, and Chile celebrate the win tonight. Richly deserved. See what it means to those guys. They just want to play really good basketball win. Yeah, they have dreams of getting to the Olympics, but they're trying to build something consistent uh, that can stand up in those difficult moments uh, like it did tonight. So Chile up at the top at 2-0, and Uruguay and Colombia both at 1-1, one and one. Uruguay over Colombia since they won their, their game and the Virgin Islands are in fourth place.